Violet. I said be here all day. I'll tell you that's some pitch. It is. Father Kenan Michael Hayes Memorial Pitch. Home of Kilmy Scully GA Club. Father Kenan Michael Hayes would have been proud of it. He would. I'll tell you something that God made the world. That night had made that pitch by. Uh, I just called with the with the rent for the field. Thank you, Mr. Glancer. I was just uh, wondering, uh, Mrs. Gilhooley, um, about the field. What about it? Well, we were just wondering if you're interested in selling it. I don't approve of athletic activity at all, Mr. Glancy, Gaelic or otherwise. Sweaty young men. Cavorting semi-naked with their sticks in their hands every second Sunday. Sunday, Mr. Glancy. Sunday. I know, but... Robert it was who began this renting arrangement. And I've continued it in his memory. I'm not in the habit of repeating myself. But if I had my way, you and your bunch of ball-hopping yahoos wouldn't get within an ass's roar of that feet. I know, but you... Say and that her... Mr. Clancy, it's closed. Well? <laughs> well, she's as tough as Tawny Wire, all right. That she is, and more. Mm -hmm. But that was before I turned on the old dandy man charm, huh? Hands? Like putty in me hands, boys. <laughs> putty in me hands. Tell by the dead. Good man, the dead. So if we know how to keep the women happy, we'd still be in paradise. <laughs> Just that good. Is she going to sell it? The field? In all fairness, you know. She didn't say she would sell it. I'm not in the habit, says she, of repeating myself. But on the other hand, says she, I'm in the process of reviewing... My property portfolio. My property portfolio. <clears throat> Not good. What is good, all right. What's a portfolio? <laughs> <laughs> What's a portfolio? What's a portfolio? Luther! <laughs> What is a portfolio, then? Well, all I'm saying is that field belongs to us right and proper. To be nothing without us. Good man, the Dan. Well, that's true, then. Do you see these hands? After the under-13 Junior B Camogie final, the father and myself picked every wibbly-wobbly wonder rapper out of that pitch with these hands. A boy, the Dan. No one deserves that pitch better than us. Everyone says that. Who took the ham out of the sandwich? What? Did you take the ham out of the sandwich? No, Dan, no. Well, somebody did. Well, it wasn't me, Dan, I swear. Leave Jimmy alone. Probably knows he's a vegetarian. <laughs> <laughs> what in the name of God is that? 3.47. Time for a committee meeting, Dan. Right. Who has the minutes from the last meeting? Oh, I do. <clears throat> uh, item one. Uh, there is a greyhound doing his business on the pitch. Well, we all know that's been dealt with. Uh, item two. Uh, we should ask ourselves about selling us the field again. 
Well, as I've already reported, the ongoing negotiations between the relevant parties is ongoing. So you can put that under ongoing ongoings. Any other business? Order she wrote is on at four o'clock. Any other relevant business? No? Right, well that's that. Short and sweet, then. Aye, yeah, Jackson. You have to keep things moving. Which reminds me, I must go and strain those spuds. Top of the morning to you, officer. How can I help you? Where's the rest of it? I beg your pardon? The car, I mean, is this all there is? Yeah, it is a bit small. Small? I'm surprised there isn't a handle for carrying it. <laughs> I love the way she says that. Huh? <laughs> the way the Wiggle says, I'm not in the habit of repeating myself. I'm not in the habit of repeating myself. I'm not in the habit of repeating myself. I am not in the habit of repeating myself. That's it, I love that. Mr. Walsh? Yes, ma'am. How can I get you? I'm not in the habit of drinking strong liquor, Mr. Walsh, as well you know. However, for the day that's in it, I'll have a small sherry. I'm given to understand that uh, you hold an auctioneer's license. Well, you're half, right? Uh, I hold auctions. Very good. I've decided to put the field up for public auction. You mean dance pitch? I think you'll find, Mr. Burke, that the field belongs to me. Well, uh... Public auction, Mr. Walsh, to the highest bidder. That'll be too easy. Hey, you old bag. Sure, that stands, Pitch. Uh, uh, you just missed the waiter. Gilhooley. Oh, yes. She's selling the pitch. To the highest bidder. Sure, that's fair enough. It's my pitch. Everyone knows that. So who'd bid against me? That's what I said. Who'd bid against the Dan? This cause for celebration, Jaxie. <laughs> Break out the baby sham. <laughs> you're the Dan, you're the Dan, you're the Dan. <laughs> now, where do the batteries go in? What? The batteries, where do they go in? It runs on gas. Gas? Uh, petrol. And how many points does it take? <laughs> There might be outsiders. What's that? There might be outsiders at the auction. Outsiders? Yes. Would these be the same outsiders that dogged our dressing rooms with cow dung after the under-14 final? Ah, Dan. Would these be the same outsiders that stole two bales of hay from Patsy Fahey's bottom field? The same outsiders that ravaged our river with bags of lime and hollies and left us without a trout ever know. The trouble between us and the bally boys is over, then. Over? Over? Tis over because I drove about, me and my kind. Did, 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 then? Now, the widow Gilhooly will get her money. And the priest, he's Easter Jews. We'll have a drink for everyone here. Good man, the Dan! Look, officer, can we move things along here? I'm on a tight schedule. Can I interest you in a pair of furry dice? Furry dice? Dice. <laughs> I get you. I know this routine. Will 20 bucks cover it? <laughs> so for 20 bucks, you get two pairs. <laughs> Well, 5,338 euro. That's all the club have. Surely that'll be enough. Between you and me, the reserve is 5,000. God bless the work. Father, will you have something? No, Jaxie, I'm not staying. I just dropped in to see if there's a music session on this evening. Of course, Patsy McHugh and the Mulligan triplets every Thursday. Great. Are two of the triplets still in England? They are, but the Kelly twins fit in for them. Isn't one of the Kellys in hospital? They are. Podge Looney is going to play instead of him. And Patsy McHugh is home from his holidays? No, Mike Sheehan is going to play instead of him. So, so who's playing tonight? Patsy McHugh and the Mulligan triplets. Right. Okay. 
Listen, I have a Yang coming up to the parochial house this afternoon. Looking for his roots, I suppose. Well, he has a few bob to spend, judging by the sound of his letter. He's mad into the music, and I promise him a bit of a session. So will we see you all later on? Right. OK. Right. Great. I'll see you then, so. Right. Well, you go in, Ah, go on, the Dan. You've a grand voice. Would you stop? I've better things to be doing with my throat. All right, so. Come on, Timmy. Give us an old song. All right, so, if you're insisting. Ah. Oh, God, he sings this lovely. Go on, now. As I rode out one morning in the afternoon. I spied a pretty maiden, she was gawking at the moon. She said she loved the sailor boy, who's all gone off to say. He had a shy and one less eye, and so she he looked like me. She grabbed me by the lily white hand, and she led me to her bed. She laid me down and tied me up, and this is what she said. As I roved out one morning in the month of May, May. I spied a maid with her hair in braid, and her head all gone astray. She said she loved the sailor boy, whose skin was as white as delf. He had a hump and a leg like a stump, and so she he looked like myself. So she grabbed me by the lily white hand and she laid my head on her breast. And the tale she recited of love and requites just to get it off her chest. As I. <laughs> God, I love that song. Granddad Shaughnessy used to sing that. Did he, Harry? Did he? Well, I wasn't finished. Well, who is, buddy? Who is? Say, it's thirsty work listening to you all. Set him up, our man. Drinks all around. Mine's a whiskey. Good man, the Yank. Just a small one for me, Jackson. So what is he here at all? Harry's great-grandfather was born here. We found him in the parish records. <laughs> he must have been a small man. Hell, he played hurling for the parish. Two, killing a scully. <sighs> Ladies, child, now, girls, grab your partners. Who's that, Sir Spilotti? Jesus, Nurse Spilotti's in the tail again. That could be a big night, Timmy. Me up your <laughs> You're all afraid of the nurse, Meloni. I'll dance with you. 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 I'll Now, what am I bid for this field? 
three acres, two gold posts. Three acres, two gold posts, and a dressing room. Now, who'll start me off? There must be some interest in this field. Ah, for fuck's sake, lads. 4,999 euro. 4,999 euros from Jimmy. Any advance on 4,999? Do I hear 5,000? 4,999 it is. Go on once. Go on twice. Go on three. 5,000. 5,000 from <laughs> Dan the Man Clancy. <laughs> All done at 5,000. Ah, oh, you're the Dan, you're the Dan, you're the Dan! <laughs> 5,000, gone once, gone twice, gone three... 6,000. Huh? 6,000 dollars, guineas, whatever. <coughs> 6,000 from the American gentleman with the toy car. Uh, 6,000 is so. 6,000... Gone once, gone twice, gone th Have you a license? Huh? Have you a license? An auctioneer's license? You didn't ask me that when I was auctioning the patrol cap. I'm asking you now. You know very well, Dick, I don't. This auction is in violation of Section 3, Paragraph 9 of the Auctioneering Act of 1894. And I hereby declare it null and void. What's that mean? It means it never happened. And this is an illegal gathering. Off with ye. Man, clear the streets. There's nothing to be seen here. Go for a point. Right, yeah. And these are yours, by the way. That was a close one. <laughs> Hell, I've never seen that before. An auction broken up by the cops. <laughs> like I say, you guys sure know how to throw a party. Say, Jaxie, can I buy the field by a private treaty? Treaty? Hell yeah! Just name your price. Tell you what, you think about it while I go water the cattle. And while you're at it, set up another round for my buddies here. Come on, Timmy. Where are we going? It's about time we give that Yank a fright. Listen, I want you to give me your son a mort. That you leave Killer Scully first thing in the morning and won't set foot here again. Be a good yank. Go home. You gotta be kidding me. I came here to buy a field, and that's just what I'm gonna do. Right, sir. Go ahead, mate. in a public toilet. At your age, are you not ashamed of yourselves? At the end of the day, it's only an old field. Only a field? Only a field? It was just one time. We were lying in the pitch. The father and myself. The mother was helping. She was in one corner flag. I was in the other. A bag of lime burst. Keeled over, so to speak. The mother was covered in it. And the father said to me, run for the cloth. And I said, no. We'll hang the nets first. We'll hang the nets. Father looked at me 
with tears of pride in his eyes. Because he knew, he knew I'd look after that bitch. Uh, no, Dan. It... And if you think I'm going to meet my mother in heaven or hell without that GA bitch, well, you have another thing coming. By the den, you told him. <laughs> I did, for all the good it did me. He's on his way up to the widow now. With the priest, doing me out of my commission. It's always the same. The small man hasn't a chance. Back in the famine shop, when the potatoes are rotten in the streets, you could walk the lint in British's country on the back of a horse. You wouldn't find the small man. Not one. And where were they? Rotten in the streets. In America. And where are they now? The small man with his big notions. In America. Back here. With their little cows and their big hats. All I'm saying is just because you lost the battle doesn't mean you've lost the war. Couldn't mean the day. So, when the black and tens were stalking the country, where was Michael Collins, huh? In America. America? You loser. He was sniping at him from the high grass. What exactly are you proposing, then? An ambush? That's precisely what I'm proposing. Timmy? Jimmy? You know what to do. I have to say, it feels good to be able to give something back to the land of my father's father. Ah, uh, yeah. And your father's father's father. Uh, yeah. Can you smell that, father? I'm sorry about that, Harry. That's the trouble with these small cars, you know. <sighs> Fresh air. All right, yeah, of course. <laughs> Here comes Rockefeller. Dad, Jaxie, Harry has an announcement to make. Now, I'm not one for making speeches. Yeah, well, I'm not one for listening to them. Dan, Dan, Dan. Hey, who gave you the right to call me Dan, you danky doodle dandy? Dan, you got me all wrong. Hey, you're not in Kansas now, Tozer. Dan, Dan, heal the man out. Dan. On his deathbed, my father said he had wanted to return to his ancestral parish and bestow a gift. Well, the dice never fell the right way for Pops. He never fulfilled his dreams. So I have. Sure, I bought your ballpark. But it's not what you think. Dan, I'm proud to present the field to Killin' a Scully Hurling Club. field is yours, Dan. It's your pitch. Now, go play ball. Dan! What the hell? Dan! This cause for celebration.
She isn't that good. Is she going to sell it? The field? In all fairness, you know. She didn't say she would sell it. I'm not in the habit, says she, of repeating myself. But on the other hand, says she, I'm in the process of reviewing... My property portfolio. My property portfolio. Isn't that good? What is good or is? What's a portfolio? <laughs> What's a portfolio? What's a portfolio? Loser! <laughs> what is a portfolio, then? Well, all I'm saying is that field belongs to us right and proper. To be nothing without us. Good man, the Dan. Well, that's true, Dan. Do you see these hands? After the under 13 Junior B Camogie final, the father myself. I'll tell you that's some pitch. It is. Father Kenneth Michael Hayes Memorial Pitch. Home of Kilmy Scully GA Club. Father Cannon Michael Hayes would have been proud of it. He would. I'll tell you something that God made the world. That night had made that pitch by. Uh, I just called with the with the rent for the field. Thank you, Mr. Lancer. I was just uh, wondering, uh, Mrs. Gilhooley, um, about the field. What about it? Well, we were just wondering if you're interested in selling it. I don't approve of athletic. Picked every wibbly wobbly wonder wrapper out of that pit with these hands. A by the dent. No one deserves that pitch better than us. Everyone says that. Who took the ham out of the sandwich? What? Did you take the ham out of the sandwich? No, Dan, no. Well, somebody did. Well, it wasn't me, Dan, I swear. Leave Jimmy alone. Everybody knows he's a vegetarian. <laughs> <laughs> What in the name of God is that? 3.47. Time for a committee meeting, Dan. Right. Who has the minutes from the last meeting? I do. <clears throat> uh, item one. Uh, there is a greyhound doing his business on the pitch. Well, we all know that's been dealt with. Uh, item two. Uh, we should ask ourselves about selling us the field again. Well, as I've already reported, the ongoing negotiations between the relevant parties is ongoing. So you can put that on the ongoing onboards. Any other business? Murder, she wrote it on at four o'clock. Any other relevant business? Big activity at all, Mr. Glancy. Gaelic or otherwise. Sweaty young men. Cavorting semi-naked with their sticks in their hands every second Sunday. Sunday, Mr. Glancy. Sunday. I know, but... Robert it was who began this renting arrangement. And I've continued it in his memory. I'm not in the habit of repeating myself. But if I had my way, 
You and your bunch of ball hopping yahoos wouldn't get within an ass's roar of that feat. I know, but you say. And that, her, Mr. Clancy, is closed. Well? <laughs> She's as tough as Tawny Wire, all right. That she is, and more. Mm -hmm. But that was before I turned on the old dender men charm, huh? Hands? Like putty in me hands, boys. <laughs> putty in me hands. Tell it by the dead. Good man, the dead. <laughs> so if we know how to keep the women happy, we'd still be in paradise. <laughs>